Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers of Agenda. Say hello, Piggy. <laughs> okay, pasensya na kayo. Inaaliw ko lang kayo kasi may mga kaibigan tayong natutulog pa. Kailangan gisingin. But in any case, uh, welcome to the program Agenda. It's December 17, 2020. It's a Thursday. Isang araw na lang ay mag-uumpisa na po. Ha? Kasi Thursday ngayon, bukas biyernes, eh, pagdating po ng Sabado, ay palagay ko umpisa na. It will be the beginning of the exodus. Exodus to the provinces. Exodus. I mean, this I have to see. We really have to see this, whether or not people will actually find ways and means to travel to the provinces because uh, historically, pagdating nung uh, first, uh, yung weekend before Christmas, eh, marami lumalayas na. Marami <laughs> nagpapayal na ng leave o hindi na lang papasukan o nagsasara na ng opisina at biyahe na. Kasi pahirapan nga yung biyahe. Yung iba umiiwas na sa traffic at saka sa pila. But given that the bus companies are only about to start their, uh, their uh, travels to the provinces due to COVID-19 and the lockdowns, community quarantines, etc., ano kaya ang mangyayari? Eh, yun ang uh, medyo concern ko because uh, we are supposed to, you know, uh, traditionally, when the Christmas week starts, TV shows like Agenda usually just play the best off or reruns. Or, kasi kailangan din po naman namin magpahinga, kailangan din po namin magbakasyon. Kasi imagine, from the beginning of covid Uh, to the continuation of COVID, uh, tayo po, ako personally, I only went on leave for one day. Only one day because of a uh, need. Pero, and kawawa rin yung staff because uh, as we, as not many people know, people like Gab, people like Dijo, uh, Arvik, uh, Jen, and uh, all the other guys, uh, we know na, Uh, who are part of the team uh, team agenda, the working team, eh, alas dos na umaga, alas tres na umaga. Yung iba, three o'clock, four o'clock, na nakapuesto na just putting things together. It's not a simple matter as calling someone. In fact, uh, our guest coordinators, Jen and Dijo, they work on this 
uh, uh, continuous, continuously while also working on uh, other programs. So, medyo bug-bug sarado na rin at yung iba nga eh. And then, some of them also have their personal uh, matters to take care of. Like Gabby has a daughter, uh, is a newlywed with a uh, young, very young daughter. So, yung tawag sa akin si Lolo, uh, hindi pa nagsasalita. <laughs> but in any case, uh, I'm just making it personal so you understand that uh, a lot of us uh, work quite uh, hard. It's not a matter of just calling someone and putting them in front of a camera or asking them to go on their computer. No, no, no. It's coordination. We, we discuss topics. We shoot down topics. We have to deal with, with guests suddenly dropping out or unable to connect. So very stressful po itong uh, trabaho na ginagawa ng team agenda. But we enjoy it. I mean, it's not enjoy, enjoy. You say, wow, happiness. No, we enjoy it because it's good work, it's professional work, and it is work that helps the public, informs the public, and gives air to all sides. Maski na sa gobyerno, okay. Uh, ayan, no, pinagsasabihan na ako ni Gab, higsiyan ko raw yung spill ko. Relax lang, pare. Pasko naman eh. <laughs> okay. Anyway, today we are going to uh, interview Ito po, alamat. Alamat na ito ng mga pakikibaka, pagla, paglaban sa mga mali. We are going to speak with Eta Rosales, former chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Brigadier General Ildebrandi Usana, spokesperson of the Philippine National Police. First time kasi... Uh, matagal-tagal na rin siya sa pwesto pero <laughs> sabi ko ngayon ko lang yata makakausap finally. Dr. Ted Herbosa, a regular of uh, Agenda, Special Advisor on the National Task Force, and Jericho Rosales, Puerza ng Bayan Atleta. Bakit po si Eta Rosales tungkol doon sa investigasyon na ginagawa ng International Court, uh, Criminal Court uh, tungkol sa mga ano, uh, EJK, extrajudicial killing sa Pilipinas na sinasabi ng investigador na eh, may mukhang crimes again, crime against humanity yung nangyayari doon na patay ng patay ng mga kung sino-sino so pag-usapan natin yan and uh, of course to respond to that would be Brigadier General uh, Usana kasi sa PNP naman dahil sila rin yung ika nga eh, uh, pinagsususpechahan dito and then uh, with Ted Herbosa, we're going to ask Dr. Ted regarding this problem na nako mukhang nag-mutant ninja turtle itong tinamaan na COVID-19 na ito. Uh, apparently, there is uh, suspicion, I'll call it that, suspicion that COVID-19 has had a mutation in certain parts of the world and that uh, maski na dito na napapa chismis napapabalita meron din dito sa Pilipinas na napakabilis mang hawa ah yung bang uh, hindi ka tulad no na medyo dumistan ka lang magmas ka lang okay okay na ito raw mutant ninja turtle na covid-19 eh medyo virulent that's the word and fi uh, finally why Jericho no Grales eh kahapon po pinul out ng uh, Manila International Airport Authority yung original proponent status ng Mega Wide doon sa pag-ayos ng uh, naiya eh ang isa sa mga harshest critics ng Mega Wide itong si Jericho Rosales eh ngayong umaga naman biglang ayan lumabas sa business Sec section ng ano ng uh, Philippine Stars SMC makes a bid for Naya diba they just got the uh, go signal to start constructing the San Miguel uh, San Miguel uh, oh, sandali ano Jericho Nograles po hindi ah, Jericho Rosales ba ang sorry kasi kay bigyan ko na doon sa Facebook si Echo anyway hindi Echo ito si Jericho Nograles okay Anyway, uh, yung naiya, pinag-uusapan. Medyo miinit yata doon. Okay, let's go to the uh, front page of the Philippine Star. Let's take a look at the front page and the top story in today's paper. Oy, ilabas nyo na yung Philippine Star. Ah, ay, ang bagalayan. Oh, pati, pati kayo, inaantok katulad ni Kuya Sito. Okay, yan. 
Uh, the top story in today's paper, 1,100 schools have been selected for the pilot run of face-to-face -face classes. At the top of the page, Senator Ping Lakson continues to be vocal on the allegedly botched Pfizer deal. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, meanwhile, denies there was a dropping of the ball. We also see a photo of Catholics taking part in the annual Simbangabi, which the CBCP calls as a gift of hope. At the lower part of the front page, the police says they will hand out face masks and face shields to those who have none instead of making arrests. Or at least, maski pa paano, nag karon nagbago uh, na yung patakaran dahil wala rin kayong paglalagyan mahahawa pa yung mga nahuli eh dami po 3,000 ba lampas ng 3,000 ang nahawa na sa ating mga kapulisan so wag laman po tayo puro batigos no pati yung pulis nagkakasakit dahil diyan sa kanilang trabaho okay a social weather station survey also showed that fewer Filipinos are hungry. Sana naman po, pero pasensyahan na. Basta yung mga survey-survey, kung 1,200 lang ang sinisurvey, ay kayo na lang. The other news are Philippines secures $13 billion in foreign loans and grants to fight against COVID-19. Tapos, ito yung magandang balita. Sa Amerika, mukhang pinayagan na ng kanilang FDA, okay, uh, home test for COVID is also out. Ayan, kasi pwede ka nang bumili para bang pregnancy test. Huwag lang kayo magkamali, ha? baka mamaya kung ano yung madampot ninyo, yung pala positive kayong buntis. Uh, kala hinahanap nyo kung positive kayong COVID. And Palace calls the ICC report on war on drugs a political propaganda. Okay. Uh, sandali. Oy, ito pala. Ah, importante mabasa ko lang ito. Uh, we, as we have discussed with Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship, Joey Concepcion, the private sector has been busy in procuring AstraZeneca vaccines for the country. Okay. We have received the list which includes... Go Negosyo, ICTSI, uh, BDO, and PLDT Smart. And uh, nagpapasalamat kami. Medyo mamaya gagawang kumparaan na mabasa yung full list. So uh, kung pwede sana ma-post mo agab. Uh, kasi commitment natin yan sa mga donors that we will recognize them. Kahit yung maliliit na kumpanya kasi uh, mababasa naman nating madali yan. Okay, but in the meantime, let's go to our first interview kasi marami tayong mga bisita. Let's speak with former chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Eta Rosales. Ma'am Eta, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Sito. How are you? Ah, nice to see you. Been a long time. Napaka-quiet mo. Are you doing apostolic work? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm not that quiet. I'm doing a lot of things. I also teach. I continue teaching. Yeah. Okay. What are you teaching now? I didn't know about that. Uh, Philippine governance and development and uh -huh. uh, migration studies. Oh, so okay. That keeps me busy. Plus, a lot of things also keep me busy. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, you have, sabi ko nga, alamat ka na eh. Alamat ka na, you are a legend in the realm of, of uh, public interest, uh, governance, and uh, of course, you, uh, you are a fighter, a, a critic of, of things that go wrong. Hindi ka naman kalaban ng gobyerno per se, but you have always uh, stood your ground. And uh, that's why we wanted to ask you, kasi ikaw marami kang experience, marami kang uh, 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 knowledge when it comes to human rights and the International Co Criminal Court of Justice. Ngayon, uh, the reason we invited you to join us is to explain to our viewers, ano ba itong issue na ito na sabi, pin, medyo nag-react agad yung mal Malacanang na nilabas ng ICC na mukhang meron silang batayan para ipagpatuloy yung investigation on the allegations of crime against humanity, yung mga uh, EJK, Oplan Tokang, etc. Oh, um, 
nakita ko nga dun sa front page ng Star, no? Mm. Uh, political propaganda ba yung tinawag? Yes. Uh, ICC poli- political ba? Yeah, uh, pa- the palace says ICC statement is a political propaganda. Oh, Ayan, yeah. sandali, pasensya na ako hindi masyadong magaling eh. Okay. Uh, okay. yan. Okay, sorry. Oh, siguro magandang pag-aralan din ng ICC ng palasyo hmm. ang ICC. Mas palalimin pa ang pag-aaral niya. Eh ang mismo ng gobyerno nga natin eh pumasok yan sa ICC na yan. Mm. Dahil sa hindi man propaganda ang tingin nila sa ICC. Malalim-lalim pa kesa sa political propaganda. Magandang pag-aralan yan. At alam mo kung sino ang dalubhasa diyan? No. Uh, the no less than Harry Roque. As okay. the head of international studies in UP, uh, is an expert on the ICC. As a matter of fact, Harry Roque used to be a member of the Philippine Coalition for the International Criminal Court. In other words, he was a strong advocate for the ICC. At uh, ang katwiran nito, eh, talagang yung pagtatanggol sa karapatang pantao ng mga mamamayan sa loob ng isang bansa. So, oh, alam ni Ikon yon. At pag-aralan natin, kung pag-aaralan ninyo, malalaman natin na hindi lang ang Pilipinas yan kung hindi ang mga iba't ibang mga bansa that commit human rights violations. Mm. So, um, to start with, if we say that we were once upon a time a member of the ICC way back, no? Mm. In uh, August, uh, during the time of... Uh, President Aquino, I think it was. Because that was the time that I was... Um, panahon pa ni Erap yan eh. That I was uh, campaigning very hard for the ICC. That was the time when we campaigned to be a member of the International Criminal Court. Because as a member of the International Criminal Court, we at least have the protection of the court to be able to look into investigations of um, highly, you know, criminal crimes against mm. humanity, rape, you know, crimes against women, mm. and, and so on and so forth. No? So right now, the ICC is looking into the so-called alleged EJ case. So I'm using the term alleged, no, for the sake of the policemen, mm-hmm. alleged case, AJ case, that have actually been taking place since the time of uh, President Duterte. Mm-hmm. So that July 1, 2016, up to the time that we have been uh, members of the ICC, which was up to March 17, 2019. They, mm-hmm. oh, so, pin, umalis na si Duterte dyan, but we were members of that at uh, pinaglaban namin yan. And no less than the late senator, uh, defensor, no, he he defensor. defensor, was the one who was with me, no, pinaglaban talaga. And she was the one that made the resolution in the, uh, what do you call this, the Senate for ratification of the ICC. In 2011. So, oh, 2011, yeah. Mm. As early as 2011. In fact, uh, good that you mentioned uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago because wasn't she supposed to sit as a judge in the ICC at one point? Medyo nung tinamaan lang siya nung kanyang ano, uh, sakit, eh, nag-beg off na siya eventually. Yes, she won. Mm-hmm. She won. Because everybody, uh, uh, you know, they elected her to be as, uh, to sit as a judge in the mm-hmm. ICC. So, so hindi ito, hindi, yung, yung, yung membership natin sa ICC and, and our engagement with the ICC is something that is uh, serious, that is uh, well thought out. Uh, we, we, you guys worked for it. 
and it was intended for the benefit of the state and the citizens. Kasi yes. para ngayon, pag, nakikini, pag binabasa ko yung mga sinasabi ni, uh, li, ni Attorney Sal Panelo, the Presidential Legal Advisor, and uh, Harry Roque, eh parang nagkakapersonalan na at uh, minamaliit na yung yung uh, powers and coverage ng ICC because uh, I mean I, I don't know you, I'm not a lawyer but Sal Panelo did say eh, hindi na tayo member diyan eh Bum kumalas nga tayo so kung kumalas tayo we no longer recognize them uh, I think that's it, that's the shortest way of uh, uh, putting what uh, Sal Panelo uh, expressed mm -hmm. yeah but that's Sal Panelo Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. is entitled to his own opinions. Now, okay. but, uh, but what the ICC says is that we are actually responsible for, or the ICC has jurisdiction over us since the time we entered and ratified the ICC. The ICC is a treaty. Mm. But, oh, it's a treaty. Yeah, it's ratified by the Senate, not less than the Senate. And so we are responsible. They have jurisdiction over the crimes against humanity committed by us from the time we became members up to the time we finally withdrew or the uh, withdrawal became effective. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, because we withdrew March 17, 2018. Yeah. It's already under Duterte, President Duterte. But the effectivity of the withdrawal took place a year after. Kasi yun naman yung batas. Mm, okay. So it was 2019. But up to March 16, 2019, COVID pa yan. Kaya lahat from July 1, 2016 to uh, March 16, 2019, COVID, the ICC has jurisdiction over whatever crimes we have committed. Okay, now speaking of crimes, kasi hindi naman tayo katulad ng Bosnia, Herzegovina, etc. na merong gera uh, or sa, saan ba yun, yung dito sa may uh, yung uh, Burma or whatever whatever the, they call the country. Uh, na, nalilito na ako sa iba-ibang pangalan. But, you know, there is a war, there is a, uh, you know, there is a uh, civil war, etc. But here, parang pinupuntir niya si Presidente. Uh, they, as if uh, from the discussion and the actuation of the investigating uh, officer or prosecutor, uh, they're putting the blame or the allegation on President Duterte and no, no one else. Oh, mukhang siya, no? Mukhang mm. siya yung pinupuntirya. Kasi siya naman yung may patakaran, eh. As a matter of fact, he calls it a war on drugs. Mm. So people are wondering, bakit may gera ba dito sa Pilipinas? Mm. Di ba? Bakit may gera? Eh, wala naman yata ang civil war, as you put it. Wala naman yata mm. ang civil war. Eh, bakit niya sinasabing gera yan? Tapos yung mga pinapatay, wala naman silang, hindi naman sila mga armado eh. That's not a private army na nagbabarilan sila. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, but, 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 this one. Oh. yeah, but but the question is, why target Duterte per se? I mean, you know, yes, uh, okay, if he is the principal uh, uh, administrator of this uh, alleged crime against humanity, but one would assume na bago magsalita yung ICC. Teka, teka, ang dami na naming ebidensya, ang dami na naming mga witnesses. We have uh, substantiated evidence and videos, etc. na inutos niya, ginawa ni ganito, etc. I, I have to be fair, uh, Ma'am Eta, no? I mean, uh, I have to be balanced about this. Parang, we, I haven't seen that. It's all, oh, uh, he's, he's a bad person, he should be charged. Parang ganun eh. Well, as President of the Republic of the Philippines, you make national policy, right? Mm -hmm. And you make policy with respect to programs that your government will initiate 
on the question of drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, he has actually announced this, that ako, from day one up to the time I finish, I will make sure that we will get rid and eradicate, you know, drugs here mm -hmm. in the Philippines. Peddlers of drug, drug users. Ako, I have questions about drug users. We have to amend the law. Kasi yung drug mm -hmm. users, they are patients. They are not criminals per se. Okay. Oh, just, but, quick, just quickly, ma'am, eta, no? Uh, matanong ko lang. Are there similar cases around the world? Like, let's say, Mexico. Mexico, nagkaba na tana doon, open war na. Uh, actually, it's internationally recognized as a drug war uh, being launched by both sides. Uh, the drug dealer, the cartels, and the government of Mexico. But... Oh. You're, you're talking about cartels, no? Yeah, yeah. Meron bang mga presidente or heads of states na in a similar position that have also been charged by the ICC? I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. Know. Well, uh, I, I I'm respect just that. the Philippines, no? Palestine. Mm -hmm. They they have you know they have questions on Palestine, Iraq, and uh, several other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with respect to drugs in particular, it is the Philippines. Why? Because, let's go straight to the point. Bakit nga naman si Presidente Duterte? Siya yung mm. nag-uutos eh. Siya yung nag-uutos sa kanyang kapulisan na dapat uh, tapusin na itong drug issue, uh, issue na ito. Mm. At yung kanyang utos na ito, abay, kung wala silang uh, kuan, kung mambabaril, kung nanlaban, eh tapusin na ninyo. In other words, he allows extrajudicial killings for what is claimed as kung nan laban. Okay. And it has been proven, thousands have been killed kasi raw nan laban. Mm -hmm. Pero ang lumalabas, hindi naman pala nan laban, wala naman pala silang mga baril, at uh, it became a policy. Basta mm -hmm. natin nila, o napuntiryahan nila, na ito ay mga peddlers na nabanggit ng neighboring barangay, na ito ay peddlers na lagay sa narcolis, na ito ay mga kwan, users, pwede na silang barilin. Pwede na silang okay. But, but okay, assuming, assuming na lang na that is the case, assuming na in their eyes or in, in their, uh, with their, uh, in their position, the ICC believes uh, guilty si Duterte or, uh, number one, uh, sinasabi, sinasabi ni Sal Panelo, wala, it's uh, too early to talk about this kasi hindi pa naman talaga ginagawa yung formal investigations, uh, process to, Parang kumbaga, wala naman nagsasampa pa ng formal na complaint o hindi pa inuumpisan yung formal investigation, number one. Number two, assuming, assuming na lang na merong reasonable cause, uh, kaya ba nilang dalin si President Duterte sa ICC? Uh, what is the scenario like if uh, the ICC decides to go after him? First of all, tama si Panelo. Mm. Wala pang formal investigation. What we have right now is what is known as a preliminary examination, phase three. Kaya nga yung preliminary examination, ilang bang phases yun? Apat. Mm. It's a holistic view of how they look exhaustively at all the information that they gather. Mm -hmm. So we are still at the preliminary examination stage. Number okay. is three pa lang yan. So, Tama siya na there is no formal investigation yet. So I'm not gonna jump the gun and say na, o oh, paano gagawin? Eh kung hindi nila makuha si Duterte, that's speculative mm. already. What I would like to say is, ano yung nangyayari sa totoo? totoo at ano dapat yung malaman ng mga tao? No? Mm. Hindi, hindi pa ito investigasyon. This is a formal, this is a preliminary examination, phase three. Apat mm. pa the faces. That's why okay. it takes quite a long time. Pero exhaustive yan. Kukunin nila lahat yung information, hindi lamang yung sa national investigation. Kasi nga, kahit nga si Secretary ano, Guevara, si Menardo Guevara, DOJ Secretary, yeah. in fact, said last June 2020 in Geneva that he plans to 
uh, get into a uh, form and join committee interagency of different governments to look into the extrajudicial killings. So tinapot mm. niya na talagang marami eh, ang dami naman namatay eh. Di ba? Mm. Thousands. Uh, siguro naman tinatanggap natin yan. Kung ki Kian de los Santos, isa lang yan. So wag nating ipagmamalaki si Kian de los Santos sapagkat isa lamang yan na kuling-kuli sa pamamagitan ng kuan ng uh, ano yung tawag mo rito? Uh, ebidensya na nakita mm. na si Sikian knelt down and then asked for help dahil meron pa siyang exam, ano, meron pa siyang exams na mag nag-aaral siya and so on. Tapos pinagpapapatay siya. So, hindi na nila maiwasan yan. So, how many Kian de los Santos evidences or incidents have taken place? Yeah. So, yun, natanggapin na natin yon Tapos, tatanggapin din naman natin yung I cannot pronounce his name. I keep on forgetting Itong yeah. si Ku, yung what? Um, itong Korean mm. actually killed inside Camp Krami. Ano pa ba naman ang ebidensya na gusto mo? But, but you know, uh, but we need to distinguish between a, a crime of the state or crime of a, of a national leader versus the individual crimes committed by, you know, uh, regardless of whether they're police officers, if they were doing it either to make money, kasi hindi ba merong mga huli dap, hinuli, like in the case of that Korean, yung huli naging kidnap, yung kidnap naging murder. Yung uh, iba naman are perpetuated by people either for promotion, for kasi ngayon ang nangyayari, Ma'am Eta, ang nakikita ko ngayon na madalas na ngayon, binabalikan naman yung mga informants ng mga police. Yung mga police informants ngayon, uh, I just read another case today, I read one yesterday, na informer ng police, bin, tinumba. So, gantihan na nangyari. Uh, do we not differentiate, differentiate uh, you know, private uh, individual? No, 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 of course. No, siguro ang mahalaga na dapat tanungin, ano ba ang batayan natin? Meron ba tayong hmm. batayan? May standard ba tayo? And that standard is clearly in the Constitution. It's the principle of accountability and responsibility. That's Article 11 of the Constitution. Once you enter a public office, kahit sino ka paman, policeman ka o presidente ka, meron kang pananagutan. No? Mm -hmm. Hindi ka dapat lumampas dun sa utos ng batas na gagawin mo. E naka-uniforme ka na eh. Mm -hmm. Ang binakawin sa'yo, taxpayers' money. So hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, eh, transactional naman itong ginawa ko eh. Kung gusto ko lang kumita, walang ganon. O ba, nasa gobyerno ka, you are a law enforcer, or you are a lawmaker, or you are a policy executioner like the executive, tatutupad ka sa batas. Nobody is above the law. So I think we should start off with that kind of matayan. No? Okay. And, when you, and when you violate the law, May mga penalties dyan, but you need to have due process. And mm -hmm. exactly what is happening right now in the ICC is what we call a due process. And it's a long process. Yeah, that uh, process. yeah I remember yung, uh, yung mga general do sa Bosnia, yung mga nag-order ng uh, ethnic cleansing doon. I think it took them, what, uh, more than 15 years to finally get those guys into the uh, inside ICC? Kaya nga, totoo yan. I know, I was there. I was there when one of these guys was actually, you know, uh, captured finally. Mm -hmm. So, tama yan. And it takes them very, very long because it's exhausting. So mm -hmm. it cannot be propaganda. That's siguro that's one thing that we should uh, rectify. Okay. And, right, no, hindi pwedeng propaganda yan. Kasi napaka-exhausting nga yan. After yung preliminary examination, then next year, you will find out the first half of 2021, sa kanila aalamin, oh, lahat ba itong nakuha natin after preliminary examination na umabot na dun sa phase four, uh, does this merit a formal investigation? Mm. Tsaka pa lang sila mag-formally investigate. No? So, okay. 
but so and, not the due process that we know. Yeah, but, but uh, in the past, uh, in the past, the Philippine government or the administration, they said, "Sorry, we're not cooperating. Uh, we we don't believe in in your in what you're doing. It's one-sided. So parang binablock nga nila, o pinapaalis nila yung mga nag-iimbestiga." So, so you go against international law. You don't have any business being a chief executive of the republic if it is easy for you to just go against international law, especially international, international law to which you are a state party or mm -hmm. to which you were a state party at the time. So mm -hmm. but I explained to you already the rules where yeah. the FCC has jurisdiction over us. Yes. Yeah. Hey, papano na ngayon? Ayaw nilang magpapasok ng investiga uh, investigador dito or, or they might decide to do that again in uh, in January or first quarter of 2021 and say, no, you're banned, barred from entering. Uh, what happens then? Yeah, it has to have cooperation by the government. Mm. And dapat kumilos na tayo. Kasi si ito, pag hindi pa tayo kikilos, parang sinasab sinasabi natin, ay okay lang naman kahit walang pananagutan si, si, si Presidente, okay lang yan sa atin, ganun ba tayo? Mm -hmm. o naniniwala tayo sa international law. Dapat kasi, we happen to be a responsible member of the United Nations, di ba? Mm -hmm. As a responsible member of the United Nations, we are obliged and committed to comply with international law obligations. We actually have eight out of nine core human rights instruments, international human rights instruments, to which... We are a state party. Talong-talong nga natin yung mga nasa Asia eh. Well, because a lot of them have authoritarian governments. Mm. So we ask kasi, democracy yung pinaglalaban natin. Unless we but, don't believe in democracy. Yeah, and, but we, we uh, I, I'd say it's still democratic. Although the government seems to be dismissive of this matter. Because sabi nga ni Harry Roque, and I will quote, uh, the ICC would not have an impact on the Philippines' economy and trade relations. That's what he thinks. You know, they're all entitled to their own opinions. I never say that if they will, the ICC will not have an impact because there are enough members of the ICC that can actually decide whether or not they will still respect you know, relationships with the Philippines if the Philippines is not compliant with international obligations. You know, there's the new Magnitsky Act of the United States. Mm. Now the uh, EU has come out with its own Magnitsky Act. I think it involves about 27 countries. So what, 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 what is that act all about? You remember that Russian... Magnitsky. Yeah, the guy who, who was Russia, pushed, huh? Who was actually, oh, who, yeah, who was killed by the Russian government. Mm. And so he never had a chance. So the United States came out with this Magnitsky Act that would, in fact, uh, not respect relations with any country who um, goes against the respect for human rights, using Magnitsky as an example. And it went around. So EU right now started studying the Magnitsky Act. And so now EU decided to have the same thing, which is fine because, you know, in other words, what are we talking about, uh, Sito? That's mm -hmm. one international solidarity. And international solidarity, all as members of the United Nations, we are all imperfect nations, di ba? Hindi man tayo perfect. Pero because we, we have influence over each other and we learn from the positive performances and, perform and activities of other nations. This is what is known as international solidarity. Ever since, at least let me tell you this, no? ever since the end of World War II, oh, hindi ka pa siguro panganak noon, Ever since the end of World War II, when the United Nations came out with this declaration, never again another world war. 
Magkaroon ng mga wars, etc. Pero hindi na yung gera katulad ng World War II. That is because of the international solidarity that was cemented by the members of the United Nations. Kaya may influensya yan. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I regret I have to uh, end our talk this morning, uh, this quickly, but uh, I've run out of time. Uh, but uh, I will uh, make a point to uh, invite you again to the program on uh, uh, after the holidays, and let's talk more about all this stuff. But uh, I think you've clarified important uh, points. You know, this is not the beginning of the end. Marami, mahaba ang process sa ICC, and at... Uh, there could be economic and poli uh, trade impacts if other countries band together to not to uh, recognize the Philippines if we don't cooperate. Mameta, last thank you very point. much. Yeah, last point lang, last point. Mm. May pananagutan din tayo bilang citizens, I think. No? Mm. It's not just government and state, but tayo mismo as citizens should be aware of our responsibilities. That's all. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, that's uh, Eta Rosales, former chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Alamat, Alagad, at uh, Kilalang uh, <clears throat> Human Rights Fighter and uh, Professora. Uh, okay, we'll be, uh, we'll be taking a break. We'll be right back. Okay, you're back here on Agenda. I'm Cito Beltran, and you are watching us via Signal TV, channels 8 and 250. At para doon po, sa wala pang signal, eh, pwede naman po rin nyo kaming mapanood sa facebook.com slash onenewsph. Okay, and so YouTube, just put in one news ph okay let's go to our next uh, next uh, guest next interviewee we have with us a police brigadier general um uh, brigada ang kanyang uh, nasa sakupan he is the spokesperson of the philippine national police and uh, let's bring in brigadier general ildebrandi osana sir good morning sir Good morning po, Sir Chito, and good morning to all your televiewers. Good morning. Okay, hindi, matag ano, matagal na kayo na nakapagpainit ng upuan. Hindi ko pa kayo na-interview ngayon pa lang. Okay, uh, Sir, ma matanong ko lang, anong uh, reaction ninyo tungkol dito sa mga napag-usapan namin kanina ni Ma'am Eta Rosales? Yung tungkol ba sa ICC uh, report na... Dapat imbestiga na itong uh, EJK at si Presidente Duterte. Well, from our point of view as uh, an instrument of the government with regard to law enforcement, crime prevention, even protection of human rights, uh, mm -hmm. we submit to any conceivable idea how to improve our level of uh, understanding what human rights is. And true enough, we have worked closely with different um, uh, institutions, in particular the Commission of Human Rights, uh, si Ma'am Eta po ay kasakasama din po namin beforehand. At uh, we were able to give flesh to how this uh, protection of human rights is put into place insofar as what the police has been doing all along. 
Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we cannot expect everyone to be our friend in this regard because we are, as a premier law enforcement institution, arrest mm -hmm. criminal. We actually put uh, behind bars those who violate the law. And mm -hmm. every time we do this, there is the likelihood that uh, some repercussions would happen. But at the end of the day, we just have to comply with the rules. Uh, the Philippine National Police happens to have the Human Rights Affairs Office. This is the only office that is dedicated to pursuing the cause of respect, protection, and promotion of human rights. Wala pong ibang mga police institutions around the world na meron pong human rights office except the Philippine National Police. That, in mm -hmm. fact, may serve as basis of the international community, including the institutions that we work with. As regards the idea of really putting premium on human rights as the first business of policing, uh, whether or not there are some lapses, some, you know, some operational um, uh, wrongdoings among our police officers, the Philippine National Police serves as the instrument of the government with regard to protection of human rights. Okay, uh, General, what what is the PNP? Because I know the reality of the PNP is every time there is a new chief PNP, there essentially is a change of direction. Hindi naman sa pamumulitika or anything, but siempre uh, every leader has his or her specialization and uh, something that that leader really is more concerned with now uh we given the new the new leadership in the pnp or the changes of leadership in the pnp has there been a time or any any chief pnp in recent history na medyo expressed concern and gave uh, their internal internal direction ba na ibistigahan nyo nga lahat ng mga EJK na yan uh, kung meron. Kasi sinabi kanina ni Ma'am Eta, one or two cases lang talaga na highlight yung uh, killing of that uh, Korean uh, kidnap victim sa loob ng Camp Krame and then the other one is yung kay uh, Ian uh, Kian De Los Santos ba yun? Uh, kasi alam ko nag investiga kayo ng mga drug users uh, among the PNP, no? Uh, tinetest nyo lagi yung mga gumaga, uh, possible na gumagamit ng drugs. But what about this EJK? Uh, is there a group investigating right now actively? Well, we have a moto proprio investigation being handled by the Internal Affairs Service. This is mm -hmm. in the aspect of administrative investigation. And, okay. uh, well, in fairness to the Internal Affairs Service, they have a 100% compliance as regards uh, the requirement for motor proprio investigation on all anti-illegal drugs operation where deaths happen. Mm -hmm. But in so far as uh, the criminal aspect is concerned, we have to uh, perhaps uh, express our position that for every time we conduct an investigation on the criminal side, we seem to be creating suspicion on what our police officers will always be doing and that does not sit well with our idea of making our police officers uh, uh, providing that kind of protection to the people and yet facing charges. Magkakaroon um, oh. po talaga ng problema kung sakali mang lagi na lang sa operation ng police pinagdududaan namin sila at may isip namin they were committing criminal actions. Okay, However, I, 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 I respect that uh, General Brandy. No? Uh, ang, ang tanong ko lang kasi Ah, pasensya ka na, medyo lumaki rin ako doong mga tiyuhin ko, mga pulis, sila General James Barbers, etc., Dong Adolfo. Ah, matanong ko lang, no? ah, may protocol ba sa PNP? Kasi alam, alam ko sa Amerika, kung pulis ka, pag nakapatay ka, in the performance of your duty, may napatay ka, sorry, pero doon ka muna sa opisina. Kumbaga, no, uh, relieve ka uh, until an investigation has been conducted and you have been proven to be innocent and doing your, only doing your job. Sa Pilipinas pa, merong ganon? Um, well, in so far as the procedures are concerned, automatically pinainvestigan nga po yan ng aming pamunuan. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not want to create, again, also another suspicion na pinukundong namin yung acts ng ating mga 
pulisan. So mm-hmm. they under two administrative uh, investigation that is being handled by the Internal Affairs Service. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, kailangan din po natin in matters of procedure ma-observe yung due process as a matter yes. of human rights on the part of our police officers. So kung sakali man po, after a certain period of time, when we ask any of the witnesses or any parties na interesadong mag ng case and we are open to accommodating them, we will be providing them enough time para masigurado naman po na yung kaso ay usad. However, for the longest time naman po, hindi po natin nakikita yung ganung pamamaraan ng mga interesadong party para iporso yung kaso. Kaya gusto rin namin po na mabigyan ng pagkakataon ng mga polis mag-perform pa rin ng kanilang duties. Notwithstanding na kung sakali man pong may mga individual na pupunta pa rin po sa ating mga impilan upang magsampa ng kaso laban sa mga kapulisan, mm-hmm. bordering on violations of human rights, then we can file an action against these police officers po. Yeah, uh, actually, General, I, I, I'm no longer focusing on the human rights, no? Kasi ako personally, hindi naman issue sa akin yan, eh, no? Uh, ang gusto ko lang matanong for now, doon, kasi doon sa procedure na pag nakabaril ang polis, SOP, uh, surrender mo yung baril mo, SOP, sa opisina ka muna, you are prevented from joining your team until na-assess ka na ng psychologist, ano ba yung impact nitong pamamaril sa'yo, uh, anong epekto nito sa katauhan mo, uh, tama ba yung pin- sin- sinunod mo ba yung protocol of en- engagement, etc. Uh, the idea is uh, it's also for the benefit of the police officer. And also I think the intention there is to make every police officer treat every shooting while we all say syempre naman nakakatroma yung pamamaril pero for them to understand that there is a tedious process they have to go through so they're careful with with their engagement uh sa atin bang PNP may ganun na na teka teka amin na muna yung baril mo uh, dito ka muna sa opisina magpa psychiatric evaluation and what do you do with officers with multiple uh, incidents of uh, shooting incidents and uh, killing a suspect? Well, um, meron naman po kami yung tinatawag na administrative relief. Mm-hmm. Uh, investigation is being conducted while these personnel are being held in the restrictive custody of their chiefs of police. Mm-hmm. And During this time, tinaturn over din po nila yung kanilang firearms. Mm-hmm. But as I'm saying, due process dictates na kung hindi po ma-i-complete yung proseso ng investigation at naka-spell out din po ito sa ating mga procedures, mm-hmm. then they will eventually be allowed to carry out their duties once again. Okay. However, if there is a necessity for them to really be held uh, for a longer period of time based on the procedures uh, that may be followed, uh, the chief of police will have the discretion not to, uh, again, allow them to perform the duties. We have to understand that uh, in so far as our uh, administrative investigations concerned, there are things that we need to comply with. And if some of our uh, of our investigators uh, fail to comply this, this requirement, then eventually, possibly ding magsampa rin ng kaso ang ating mga Okay. Gen- General, pasensya ka na ha, kasi ang daming, ang daming guess eh. Uh, one, one minute na lang, last question ko na lang. Paano yung ginagawa nyo? Kasi sa panahon ko, mukhang malaki naman ang tanda ko sa'yo. Marami na ako nakasamang mga dating police. At yung iba sa kanila talagang medyo mahaba-haba yung score eh. Uh, parang noong panahon na yon okay lang. But now, does the PNP have a policy na pag naka 3 ka na, bok, masyado kang sharpshooter, doon ka na lang sa SWAT or something like that? na uh, Is there a policy that addresses uh, police officers with multiple kill scores? Well, we don't exactly provide an idea how to assess anyone in our uh, unit to say that once you are done with three or five or even more than that killings uh, where probably during the police operations somebody died 
Um, we do not want to create again that impression indeed with this will be a test right away because we'd rather consider this as a heroic act on the part of our police officers. Why? Because in so far as illegal drugs is concerned, we also have our share of deaths. And there is mm -hmm. risk associated with conducting operations. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps the people would also understand some of the deaths involved uh, ranking officers. Mm -hmm. And they really were bent on putting an end to illegal drugs that uh, has been pestering our our youth. And uh, we cannot compromise our law enforcement faction, even if uh, it is meant to risk our life uh, mm -hmm. in the defense of our people. So maybe some people would not even understand that much. But uh, from within, we have to really commit ourselves, whatever the cost may be. Okay, well, I appreciate that, uh, General. No, uh, please uh, bear that in mind. Uh, lumaki ako na malapit sa mga police, so I understand that fully well. Uh, yung sa atin lang is parang adopting safety measures. In any case, we support the PNP. We support the PNP's campaign against drug wars. And uh, papan napupuna nga akong medyo masyado raw akong malupit pagdating sa mga drug dealers. Ano? Kanya lang, syempre, trabaho natin sa media. We have to ask all the questions. In any case, thank you, General. And uh, more power to you. And uh, please stay safe. And uh, sana po, mabawasan din yung mga nahahawa ng COVID-19. Thank you very much, General. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas po. Merry Christmas. Ayan po, si Brigadier General Ildebrandi Usana, spokesperson, Philippine National Police. Uh, yung pinatutunguhan ko po doon sa aking huling katanungan kay General, kasi may, may mga nakita na akong uh, pagkakataon na sina-challenge na yung mga ganon. Kumbaga, Kung, uh, kung baga sa babaero, di ba? Babaero. Uh, papa, papatawarin ka first time. Papatawarin ka second time. Pero kung miyat miya ginagawa mo, medyo iba ng labanan yun. Katulad din dito naman sa mga polis uh, in other countries, yung isa lang makapatay ka ng isa, medyo susuriin ka na. Tama ba yung ginawa mo? That's their first concern. Second, ano ang naging epekto nito sa pag-iisip mo? Because some people go into depression. Some people don't know how to deal with it. Some people become alcoholic. And then, pag nakapangalawa ka, teka, teka, is there any similar? Baka maging pattern yan. Eh, pag nakatatlo ka na, wait a minute. Uh, should we allow you into the general population given your track record of so many kills? Eh, alam nyo po, uh, sa totoo lang, Ako may mga nakasama na, naging, ako po kasi at 16 years old, ako ay naging uh, saling pusang police uh, report, ano, uh, press photographer sa police. Okay? And uh, marami na tayong alam tungkol doon. So in any case, yun lang po, no? yung ayaw naman natin na parang nagiging badge of honor yung kung ilan yung napatay mo. Because uh, that is the issue right now that uh, started with the ICC na six, ano yun, ilang libo, ilang how many thousand ang patay. So ayaw rin natin yun. Okay, we will go for a break. And when we return, uh, we will continue with our interviews here on Agenda. <laughs>
Okay, you'll have to excuse me. I have unplugged myself uh, in terms of audio, but uh, I think we're back on air. So, uh, ito po, makinig po kayo ng maigi. Kasi itong susunod na bisita natin, baka naman matulungan tayo dahil may mukhang nag, nag-ninja mutant turtle itong si COVID-19. Let's bring in the Special Advisor of the National Task Force versus COVID-19, former Health Undersecretary from 2010 to 2015, Dr. Teodoro Ted Herbosa. Dr. Ted, good morning. <coughs> good morning, Sito, and uh, good morning to all the televiewers out there. Oh, sabihin ko lang sa'yo, ha? ako very obedient ako sa sinabi mo. I have already been inoculated, vaccinated for the flu and for pneumonia. Para may laban tayo. <laughs> In any case, when the vaccine for COVID-19 comes, I'm sure you will be uh, queuing after the frontliners, after the oh. health workers and the other frontliners get it. Sige, mauna muna kayo ha. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have the same principle because these are basically emergency use authorization vaccines. I oh. think uh, tama yung konting caution. Let's wait and see. Uh, habang marami ini-injection na nila sa UK, Canada, North America, even China for the China vaccine. And let's wait and see. That's a that's a good uh, uh, that's not a bad idea if you're not a frontliner anyway. <laughs> okay. In any case, uh, Dr. Ted, the reason we uh, actually, pasensya ka na, I know it was a last minute invitation, pero I've been picking up so much uh, information regarding this mutation that's happening to COVID-19. And it was reported in the Philippine Star yesterday that in the, I think, southeastern side of London, the city of right. London, there was an outbreak. And, yeah. and they, when they started tracking this uh, particular virus, this COVID-19, mukhang may have reason to believe nagkaroon ng mutation at ngayon daw ay mas mabilis ang uh, makuha yung COVID-19. Now, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, sure, that's another bit of news. But the reason I got kind of concerned was yesterday there was this text message or messenger thing that made the rounds among, alam mo na, mga seniorly businessmen at sabi na pati raw sa Red Cross meeting pinag-uusapan itong high, very virulent, virulent, ano, virulent, paano ba yun? Virulent? Virulent, virulent. Virulent uh, form of COVID-19. Could you comment on this, please? Yeah, I, I got that uh, people were verifying for me that message. So I, I guess there were millions attending that, <laughs> that Red Cross meeting because they were all sending it to me. Anyway, oh. I said, there is no veracity to that, uh, that there is a more virulent strain. The, the UK strain that you're mm. talking about uh, are actually two types of uh, mutation. And mm-hmm. mutations are common among viruses, especially new viruses. The flu, and dami niyang strain, di ba? So technically, that's why we've been unable to make a very good vaccine for it for the many years it's been uh, available. It's because mm-hmm. ano siya, nag, uh, nag-mutate siya. There are about 80 strains or different mutant strains. Itong COVID-19, ang nakita nila, two types of mutations in South England. Yung first uh, epidemic kasi nila na nag-lockdown ang, long, ang England, were strains that came from Spain. Di ba yung mga British yeah. really going to Spain for summer? Yeah. Inuwi nila to. They brought it home to London and it was the northern part of England. And some of the suburbs that were kind of uh, poor, you know, lower socioeconomic, higher population density, the, li- the type the virus likes to spread in. Mm. Itong new strain, kasi meron silang genomics UK. So they they do the full strain. So ina-analyze yung buong code nung uh, new new strain dito sa increase in cases in South England. And they found two mutations. One is in the spike protein. So pariwana ko lang, yung spike protein, ito yung mga sungay-sungay, di ba, corona, parang may mm-hmm. sungay. So that protein or that S protein is the one that burrows into the cell membrane. Yung covering ng cells ng human body. And that makes the virus come in. Pag nakapasok na siya, papasok na yung RNA niya, gagamitin na yung cell. And then you're mm-hmm. infected. Uh, na, nagka-mutation doon, ano? uh, merong dalawang amino acid na nagkaroon ng deletion. So sabi nila, 
ano ang danger, number one, ano yung bag, naging behavior ng virus, at number two, yung bang mga bakunang ginawa natin, which is against the S protein, exactly the, exactly the mRNA vaccines mm. coded for that uh, ano, magbabago ba. Yun, yun ang mga unknown. So, number one, ang nakita nila, hindi siya mas virulent, pero mas contagious siya. Anong, anong difference ng dalawang word na yun? Yung virulent, uh, both contagious and fatal. Yung uh, mas contagious spreads very fast, pero hindi na mamatay. So, milder yung symptoms. Ganyan mm-hmm. po ang nangyari sa influenza vaccine, uh, influenza virus. When the influenza mm-hmm. virus spread in 1918, medyo virulent and con- ano, and uh, killer siya talaga. Mm-hmm. 200 million yata pinatay nun during that pandemic. Pero over time, nagi siyang milder. So pag natrangkaso ka ngayon, you know, you're down for a few days, then you recover. Uh, mm-hmm. Only the elderly or the really sick uh, die from uh, flu, di ba? So, mm-hmm. so yun, yung, yun yung normal way a virus eventually evolves. Kasi they mutate to a version that is less virulent. Bakit? Kasi kung virulent siya, kagaya Ebola, pag napatay mo na lahat ng host, tapos na ang transmission mo. Wala ka nang mahahanap na wala ka nang mahahanap na host. Hindi ka na mm. makaka-infect, hindi ka na dadami, magdi-disappear ka. But if you're a good good thinking virus, the viruses don't think. But I'm just saying yeah. as they as they as they're able to spread more and just people recover, they keep passing from one person to another. And that's why mm. we have an outbreak in South London and that's why they went on a second lockdown. Kasi nga mm-hmm. napaka-cases yung cases na nakita nila sa pag-spread among the areas in South London. Yeah, well, uh, the question then is, how does this mutation affect the vaccines that are forthcoming? So we don't know yet. Yan ang ano. So we don't know yet because uh, if it's a deletion of uh, the code for the S protein, Uh, hindi pa natin alam kasi ang, ang sabi nila we shouldn't be worried about mutations this is what scientists say why shouldn't we what we should be worried about is the behavior of the virus if the virus becomes starts to infect you with a more serious illness mas scary yon or if mm. the virus starts to spread faster than usual that means that the R0 yung R0 niya na, nasa 2, 2.5 pag nag-increase yan to 3 or 4 mas matakot tayo. So th- those are the scary parts. Pero itong minor deletions being detected, alam mo, nangyayari naman talaga yan, nagkataon lang because now we have the technology and we have the science to actually do the complete genome sequence of a virus. Alam mo, in 100 years ago, wala namang genomics eh. The mm. science of genomics was not yet unknown. Parang 1940s lang na-discover yung DNA and RNA eh. So, yeah. So when they discovered that, ito lang 2,000 yata yung nakapag-complete genome sequencing. And okay. do you know we also do uh, genome sequencing of the viruses here in the yes, Philippines? Yes, uh, actually, the that's... The Genome Center at saka oh. sa RITM. Oh, kasi alam mo, marami akong... Uh, alipo, uh, hindi naman aliporis, <laughs> no? Marami akong connection dyan. Eh, hindi ko makontact yung mga contacts ko. So sabi ko, teka, teka, something's happening here. Uh, everybody's being careful about guesting, making a statement. Something's happening here. My question to you, Dr. Ted, is is there a such a mutation in the Philippines na mas mahina siya, hindi tayo papatayin, pero mas marami ang mahahawa o mas madaling makahawa, especially going into Christmas? That's my last question. Is it here? Hindi ko pa alam. It's good you ask that. Medyo late ako na nakuha yung message to guest today. I would have called. In fact, this morning I was trying to call the head of the Philippine Genome Center to find out what their latest new mutations. I can get back to you and text you kung ano. I'll na, find na, that na out today with your question. Kung na, ano yung na, latest uh, genome sequences nila. Kasi they, they identify the virus. Pero alam mo, mahal ah. Every time they run one genome sequence, parang... 24, 48 hours yon to analyze the sample, and then uh, ibabangga nila yon, and they share they they share all the genome centers in the world. The scientists share their findings to each other, so mm-hmm. makikita nila kung saan siya comparable. Is it a European, a Chinese, uh, uh, yeah. a Canadian virus that's uh, coming around okay. the spring here? 
Well, well th- Doc Ted, thank you very much. Pero sa, uh, unfortunately, naunahan na kita. Kagabi ko pa kinakalampag yung Genome Center. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, susunod ako. I'll follow up and uh, uh, get the head si uh, oh. Professor Pincha Saloma. Para yeah, the, Doctora na Saloma. Na. Okay, and thank you very much. And they should start uh, doing some genome testing again. Maybe yeah. they should do some genetic sequences of the viruses currently. Luckily, the behavior here is it's going down. I still look at the daily reports of DOH. It's 1,300 yata kahapon. Mm. So, hindi na lumalampas ng 1,005 or 2,000. And that's for the whole country. Of the 1,300, parang 400 lang ang Metro Manila. The rest okay. are in the, yung naapektuhan ng Bagyo at uh, sa, sa Bagyo Ilocos yata ang uh, may mga matataas na cases. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ted Herbosa. And uh, as always, uh, it's a learning uh, process interviewing you. And we look forward to hearing more. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Thank you and Merry Christmas to you, Sito, and to everybody listening and watching. Okay, that's Dr. Ted Herbosa. So far, so good. Kasi bagamat may COVID, eh, yung COVID, kung ganun ang sinasabi ni Dr. Na pag mutate yan, it becomes a milder form but more uh, contractable. Mas madaling nakakahawa pero hindi naman nakakamatay. Eh, kanya lang, eh, marami tayong kilalang uh, nagdaan dito sa COVID-19. Naku po, uh, hindi po biro. No? Please, if you think you know it's great to party Christmas, think about this. If you land in a private hospital with COVID-19, with a severe case of COVID-19, you're looking at a cost of 3 to 5 million pesos and there are no guarantees that you will survive. Dalawang tao na ang kilala ko na hospital, COVID-19, yung isa 3 million, yung isa 5 million, pareho sila hindi magpapasko. Kasi wala na sila. Okay, let's go on to our next and final guest. Hindi po si Jericho Rosales, hindi si Eko, Pogi Boy Eko, kung hindi si Congressman Jericho Nograles ang ating next guest. Tungkol dito sa cancellation of the original proponent status of Mega White and the Naya Airport. Congressman Jericho Nograles, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Sito. Thanks for having me back in agenda. Okay. Uh, akala ko nag-set up ka na ng Christmas background dyan eh. Ano lang pala, painting pala. <laughs> Medyo na. I had, I had to do a double painting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In any case, uh, let's uh, talk uh, talk quickly about what's going on at the NAIA. You have been a uh, strong critic of the Megawide group regarding their bid for original proponent status. And suddenly, uh, just as quickly as they got their status, uh, they quickly lost it as of yesterday. Although the Megawide group says wala pa silang official notice. Uh, what's going on there? Yeah, I, I was monitoring uh, the news and I think the latest is that um, a lot of people are wondering bakit mabilis na nawala mm. and uh, they're looking for reasons why the government decided not to push through with it. Mm. Um, what, what I found lacking in the news though is that this did not happen overnight. In fact, this uh, the issue of, um, of the airport rehabilitation is a two-year-old issue. And mm. a lot of these issues are based on unsolicited proposals. Our interest as a member of the Committee on Economic Affairs is to see that the laws are followed. And mm. in, with this, no, tinitingnan natin ang BOT law when it comes to unsolicited proposals. It's revised IRR and also the PPP Governance Board resolutions in following. Meron mm. kasing step-by-step yan. And what happened in many cases na nangyari dito, and it's not just with Megawide, it was also with the super consortium, uh, I, the government had a problem in, in approving the sequence. So even in Congress, in hmm. on September 15 and October 15, it was discussed on plenary, yung mga problems dito. And one of the problems that came out, um, I think on September 15, a uh, hearing in the House of Representatives. Um, Undersecretary Ruben Reynoso of the DOTR admitted to Congress that uh, Megawide did not have 
sufficient equity. Um, that's in that's in Congress. And mm. he followed up by saying that uh, Megawide was given up to September 11 uh, to submit all the uh, appropriate uh, paperwork when it comes to their equity position. Mm. I also saw in the news that um, there's a transport group that says that nothing in the law has a prescription on what is the uh, the correct equity. Actually, mali sila. Um, there, no, it's very specific in the law uh, and it's IRR in Section 5 that there is a specific equity requirement na kailangan. In mm. fact, um, when 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 uh, the uh, the MIA sent the paperwork to NEDA, NEDA went through it. They created a project evaluation report. I have a copy of a project evaluation report here. And it has many red flags. And these red flags were um, sufficient to question uh, whether they can do it or not. Mm. Um, when I say they can, I'm talking about the legal, the legal way of doing it. Everybody, including myself, including you, Sito, you want uh, a better Naia. Who, who mm -hmm. doesn't? Mm -hmm. we, we, we all have our horror stories. But what's difficult is if we're going to improve any infrastructure na hindi dumaan sa tamang proseso, that's going to be a real issue that will come back and bite any government, any administration, any private uh, entrepreneur, anybody. So okay. yung nahabong natin dito is the proper um, yeah. implementation you of it. You've stressed the point that it has to be legal or perhaps another interpretation is it has to follow the laws of the land. Now, Correct. that all of that is good, presuming that our situation is normal. We have an abnormal situation and more so in the aviation industry and infrastructure because uh, the economies are all shot globally. Uh, even locally, our economy is shot. Uh, businesses are really down. I mean, I mean, kung tatagalugin ko, magpasalamat nga tayo na may mga taong gusto pang pumusta, gusto pang gumastos dyan sa mga infrastructures na yan. Now, how do you resolve this issue? Because, I mean, uh, you, you are a business person. I'm a business person. You're not going to see me put money on, on an industry that's just basically dead and will remain dead for the next 12 to 24 months. You're correct, no? The um, tourism industry is probably the hardest hit among mm -hmm. um, all the industries that we have. Um, and the tourism industry re is probably also the last to recover, even with mm. seeing that the vaccines are coming, the confidence of flying and traveling, whether by leisure or by business, would be, would be difficult. But the problem is you cannot suspend law. You cannot suspend law even if it's the but time I of beg, them. Echo, I, 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 echo big line. <laughs> okay lang, echo, guapo ko naman eh. Okay, uh, no, but I beg to disagree. I mean, the governments all over the world are suspending certain laws because of COVID-19, because of the economic pandemic created by COVID-19. We have Bayanihan to heal as one. Uh, which basically supersedes all laws, uh, why can't we do it for infrastructure? And I'm not taking sides, ha? kasi syempre, yeah. dun sa super consortium, uh, the MVP group was involved in that. And uh, I have friends uh, who, like uh, San Miguel, RSA is a friend, he wants to come in. But how are these people or these companies going to come in if at every turn or every corner, biglang wapak, hindi pwede kasi ganito yung sinasabi ng batas. Eh, si Secretary Carlito Galvez already said, alam mo, ang hirap mag, uh, gumawa ng solusyon sa Pilipinas kasi sobrang hirap at dami ng mga batas. Tama yan. Actually, I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm mm. not taking sides here also. Mm. What mm. I think is what's the problem, how to fix it, and in this case, no, the biggest question is, will NAIA improve? And so the, the, the answer to that is MIA, the Manila International Airport Authority. What okay. are their plans to improve? Currently, they're fixing the runway. I, I could see that, that they're fixing mm -hmm. the cross runway. 
currently they're renovating some parts of the airport. I think they're doing a 7 billion peso renovation of the airport. In fact, on September 15, I challenged the MIA and I told them, hey, you've got 47 billion pesos based on your last audited financial statements in uh, with the COA. And mm. what are you doing? This is money that you can spend to improve yourself. Why do you need to, you know, to, to pass the buck to someone else? Why don't you do it yourself? Mm -hmm. So these are the questions that I want answered. And I think I was also joined by many members of Congress, um, especially in the hearings uh, about the transportation, as to what to do about NAIA. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to have it fixed. So, so, so what's, what's, the, what's the answer, uh, Congressman Nograles? Because... Uh, I find it strange. No? Uh, if someone else is willing to pay the bill, why spend tax mayor, taxpayers' money to to fix the bill? I'm sorry, you know. Uh, I, no, I, I, no, Tito, Tito, that's a fair question, and yeah. I will answer. I will answer that. Um, the the proposal that was rejected, I went through the proposal. Okay, mm -hmm. it proposes an increase of four hundred percent of terminal fees charged to passengers. Mm -hmm. So from 200 pesos, it will become 1,000 pesos. That's for the domestic. For international, mm -hmm. from 700 pesos, it will become about 2,400 pesos per passenger. Mm -hmm. So the cost is being paid for by the passengers. So you're going to pass on the cost to the passengers. And government, who has money to spend, uh, will not spend it and then make sure na hindi tataas yung mga terminal fees. Mm -hmm. E di ba yung tourist nga is very difficult. So how, how can you say na your, your ticket prices aakit yan because of terminal fees alone? Not mm -hmm. to mention, government in this proposed contract, government will not earn for the first four years because all the income of the airport will go to the proponent. Mm -hmm. That's, the, these are the, okay. no, these are the, um, the uh, proposals. Yeah, Aside question. That, yeah. Yeah, question. How much is it going to cost for Megawide or for the super consortium to build what they were proposing? How many billion pesos as against the 47 billion that the, the Manila International Airport Authority has in their pocket? It's about more than 100 billion. That's the proposal. Okay. Mm -hmm. More than 100 billion for that. Now, the proposal that they have, they're proposing that they're going to put in $100 billion for that. Mm -hmm. But then again, how can you convince the government that you can put in $100 billion when no less than the Department of Transportation, Ruben Reynoso, the, the other secretary, yeah. they don't have enough equity position. That was September 15 in the House of Representatives. Yeah, so with but, that, you know, okay. no, but if I follow your... If I follow your trend of thought or your train of thought, uh, you're saying Naia or Mia should spend the 47 billion fixing up the Naia, and then they'll still be short by what uh, 53 billion pesos. Hindi naman and, because you could imagine that Mia has an inflow based on COA documents, an inflow of about 11 billion a year, mm -hmm. so it can. Can pay it can pay for its own renovation the question is why aren't they paying for their own renovation why are they yeah. waiting for others to propose because probably if they spend the 47 billion they won't have anything else to spend on their operations and they still won't be able to complete the project in the next 10 years i think they also said that they can that's the thing eh? they can eh? uh -huh. even in congressional hearings kaya nila. Mm -hmm. but that's that's the thing, though. You sometimes in Congress you have to push these government uh, officers to do their job. <laughs> Ay nako, pasalamat kayong lahat hindi ako diktador. Makalaglagan ko na lang ng bomba yang naiyan na yan para mawala na mawala na problema natin. Oy, lipat na tayo sa lipat. Na, you know, <laughs> in any case, no, no. I just, you know, I think you can sense my frustration. No, you know, I, we I, we've been kicking this ball back and forth for the last what two years. You two. have the. Cap captains of industries, you have uh, uh, companies, corporations uh, doing it, and we still can't get our act together. I, I, I don't know. Uh, 
I'm going to follow up on this uh, next year, uh, <laughs> Congressman Ograles. And th believe me, this is not the end of this particular issue. But uh, thank you for keeping your eye on the pro on the problem. And uh, we do hope there's a resolution. Likewise. And um, we have to push government to do their job. I think mm -hmm. MIA has to renovate itself and has to improve itself. They are doing something. I just wish that they should do more. Okay, thank you very much, Congressman Jericho Nograles, and uh, Merry Christmas to you and your loved ones. Merry Christmas. Okay, that's uh, Congressman Jericho Nograles, and uh, I, I really don't want to end our uh, day on, on, on that note, but parang <laughs> dalawang taon, walang nangyari, two years. You know, if if uh, some people in government had listened to some people uh, two years ago, three years ago, we should already have something on the ground. But welcome to the Philippines. In any case, that's it for today. That's agenda. I hope kahit papano may na pick up kayo, natutunan kayo yung mga members of Congress na kaibigan natin, senators who uh, hopefully are watching the program may have uh, hopefully picked up a few things and. Uh, that's agenda for today. We wish to teach, we wish to inform, we wish to educate. And we hope to be a blessing to all of you. Thank you for joining us today. See you tomorrow here on Agenda.